transformers in the distribution system uh, more or less functions just to convert medium voltage to residential or commercial building voltage level. In this video, we will look at how we apply health index for this asset. Let us first start by understanding what are the modes of degradation for distribution transformers. Distribution transformers are degraded by two key factors. The first one being uh, the degradation of the transformer solid insulation and insulation oil, and the second one being the contamination of the bushing and its exterior surfaces. The insulation system, which consists of mineral oil and paper, is the most important factor to consider when considering transformer aging. Transformer oil is made up of hydrocarbon compounds that oxidize with time, resulting in moisture, organic acids, and sludge development. The pace at which oil oxidizes is a function of the operating temperature. Insulation paper degrades more quickly when the acidity and moisture content of the insulating oil rises. The formation of sludge reduces the transformer's cooling efficiency resulting in greater operating temperatures and a faster rate of oxidation of both the oil and the paper. When the aging weakened insulating, uh, insulating system is subjected to a voltage surge during lightning, distribution transformers frequently would fail. Temperature rise and duration affect the life of the transformer's internal insulation. That is, the electrical loading profiles and the length of the transformer service life have an impact on its asset life. Other factors, including as mechanical damage, salt exposure, and voltage and current spikes also have a significant impact. To assess the useful remaining life of uh, distribution transformers, um, a mix of condition, age, and load based criteria is frequently used. Using the procedures given in the ANSI or the IEEE loading guide, um, the effects of loading profiles, load increase, and ambient temperature on the asset's condition, loss of life, and life expectancy can be assessed. The impact of overloading transformers above their nameplate rating on bushings, tap changers, and auxiliary components is discussed in IEEE standard C57.91 which also includes formulas for calculating the life loss of a transformer unit due to overloading and temperature rise. In order to achieve optimal longevity, the standard also establishes an initial baseline for the size of transformer that should be selected to support a certain number and type of consumers. Visual examinations uh, provide a wealth of information about a transformer's condition. Visual examinations can reveal leaks, fractured bushings, uh, rusting in tanks, among other things. Uh, when considering the environmental safety issue, the level of um, PCB or polychlorinated biphenyl insulation oil should be investigated. The main effects of a distribution transformer failure are reliability issues, which are mostly minor issues. This is why most utilities run their home distribution transformers to failure. Larger distribution transformers supplying commercial or industrial clients, on the other hand, may have a significant impact on reliability and therefore transformers may be replaced as they near their end of life. Now, when calculating the health index for distribution transformers, um, the following elements should be taken into account as shown in front of you right now which are, uh, first of all, the corrosion in the tank and the state of the paint of the tank, the size of the oil spills, um, the state of the bushings, the PCB level of the transformer, operational age and temperature profile of the windings, and the rate of a failure. Now, before we move on further into our course, let us take a brief look at our sponsor for this course. Now, as an engineer, especially when I first started in my career, I really felt overwhelmed the list of documents that we need to do on top of our technical work. Yet, these documents are very important in our career as it is the more prominent thing that displays our credibility to management and to our clients if we so decide to become an engineer consultant, which is where the real actual money is. 
Now, I don't have these tools available to me when I first started my career, but now PM Milestone has created this package of all the professional templates that you need so that you can focus more on the technical aspect of your career. These templates are tried and tested by real professionals, so you should feel confident in using them in your career to present your best foot forward in front of your manager or clients. These templates are also updated periodically, and I think their last update is just 2021, so they're not going to be out of date or context to the present times, as these people are serious in getting the most professional product to meet your needs. They're also very confident of the quality of these templates too, as they offer you their product completely risk-free with 60-day money-back guarantee if you are not satisfied with it. So, if you are interested in this product and would also like to support me in creating these courses on YouTube in the future, please check out their product using the link in my video description titled Course Sponsor PM Milestone 2.0. Now the majority of utilities overload distribution transformers. And what I mean by that is they only replace them only after they fail. With the exception of rust proofing and painting the tanks re or replacing a damaged bushing or repairing a leaky gasket, distribution transformers receive relatively little invasive preventive uh, maintenance or testing in general. The usable remaining life of distribution transformers is generally determined using a mix of condition, age, and load-based parameters. Visual examinations provide a wealth of information about transformers' condition. Visual checks can review the presence of oil leaks, um, fractured bushings, and corroded tanks. In the case of pad mount and vault transformers, um, the condition of the pad and vault also influences the transformer replacement criteria. Utilities may replace the appropriate transformer together with the pad or vault if the pad or vault is broken or degraded beyond repair. The insulation system, uh, which consists of mineral oil and uh, paper, is the most important factor to consider when considering transformer aging. Transformer oil is made up of hydrocarbon compounds that oxidize with time, resulting in moisture, organic acids, and sludge development. Increased acidity and moisture content in insulating oil leads to insulation paper to degrade more quickly. The creation of sludge has a negative impact on the transformer's cooling performances, resulting in greater operating temperatures and a faster rate of oxidation of both the oil and the paper. When the age-weakened insulating system is subjected to a voltage surge from lightning, distribution transformers frequently would lead to failure. So now let us look over, go over the rating categories uh, that composed the health index. So let us first look at the transformer's age. A transformer is assigned a rating of four if it is less than 10 years, um, assigned to a rating of three if it's between 11 to 20 years, assigned a rating of two if it is 21 to 30 years, assigned a rating of one uh, if it is between 31 to 40 years, and with any transformer that's over 40 years uh, of age, we assigned a rating of zero. So the second category is peak loading, and this is actually with respect to its nameplate transformer rating. So rating of four is given for peak load that is less than 50% of its uh, rating. A rating of three is given to transformers that has a peak load of more than 50% and up to 75% of its rating. A rating of two is given to transformers that has a peak load between 75% to 100% of its rating. A rating of one is for peak load um, uh, of a transformer that is more than 100% but less than 125%. And if uh, the peak load is greater than 125%, we will assign a rating of zero to this category. So the third category is the visual inspection. Um, so with a rating of four, it means that there are no rust on tank or enclosure, no damage to bushings, and no sign of oil leaks. 
Now, rating of three would mean that you have a minor occurrences of one of the defects, such as tank rust, bushing damage, or oil leaks. A rating of two means two or more of these uh, defects are present but do not impact safe condition. Now, a rating of one would mean that the tank or radiator is badly rusted, um, there is major damage to bushings, or that there is a major oil leak. And a rating of zero means two or more of these conditions um, are indicated as significant defects. The fourth category is um, the infrared testing, or also known as the IR test. So in this case, we only have three ratings in this category, which is only four, two, and zero. So for a rating of four, it means that no hot spots are detected. Um, for a rating of two, it means that there will be noticeable hot spots detected, but they usually do not jeopardize um, ongoing operations. At least it doesn't. Uh, uh, lead to an unsafe operation. And lastly, for a rating of zero, it means that there are very serious hotspots being detected in this test. And finally, the last category that I want to go over are only for pad mount or vault transformer. These ratings are specifically regarding to the condition of the pad if it is a pad mount transformer or the condition of the vault if it is a submersible vault transformer. And again, this category has only three ratings, namely four, two, and zero. So uh, a rating is a four if the pad or vault is in good condition or what we called as new. Uh, for the rating assigned as 2, it means that the pad or vault is in poor condition and remedial action is required. And lastly, for a rating of 0, it means that the pad or vault has been degraded beyond repair. So now let us look at the health index weight. So we assigned the condition criteria, age of the transformer, and peak loading as a weight of 2. And then the visual inspection on the IR scans, uh, as well as condition of the pad or vault. If you have a pad mount or vault transformer, we assign those one higher. So in this case, these three conditions will be uh, weighted with um, the weight of three. So now let's go over an example. Um, consider a pad mount transformer that is of 25 years of age. Um, so the rating will be two in that category. Uh, the peak load is between 50 to 75% of its rating. So we give the rating of three in that category. Um, the radiator being badly rusted. So it's rating of one in that category. And the IR test reviews that no hotspots are detected. So of course the highest rating in the IR uh, test category, which is a four, and the pad is of good condition. So again, four. Calculate the health index for this transformer. So of course, we first uh, calculate the calculated score, which is uh, the sum of the ratings multiplied by its weight of that category. So in this case, the number will be 37. And then we calculate the maximum achievable score, which is, of course, 4 times the sum of all of the weights, and that equals to 52. And, of course, the health index formula is score calculated over score max times 100, so it's 37 divided by 52 times 100 equals to 71. And as mentioned in the fundamentals previously, a value between 70 to 85 is considered good, and as such, there might be deterioration of some components, and only normal maintenance are needed. Now, if you like this video, please don't forget to click like and subscribe to our channel. Our channel, the Double E Bootcamp, has a wealth of knowledge regarding to the energy industry, so be sure to check it out. Also, this video is part of a playlist of the whole course, and so I've put the link to the playlist for this free course in the video description. As you may be aware, I'm a professional online instructor that teaches various topics regarding to the energy industry and offers certificate of completion at the end of each course. As you probably have noticed, this course needs fundamental knowledge in basic asset management. 
Physical asset management is important and the skills are highly sought after in many large companies within the energy industry or any industry that manages large asset in infrastructures for that matter. If you lack knowledge in physical asset management, look no further than my physical asset management management fundamentals course offered at electrical engineering portal. As in that course, I will provide you with the fundamentals that you need to kickstart your career in the physical asset management world. Another type of knowledge that you need for this course is fundamental information about the power distribution system. If you don't have enough experience in the industry, I would suggest you to enroll in my distribution power engineering fundamentals course hosted on Udemy as in that course, I will walk you through the different parts of the power distribution system as well as basic design concepts that you will need to kickstart your career in the industry. Now, I have put the links to both of these courses in the video description also. Lastly, I have also included the link to my website in the video description that contains the information to all the courses that I offer as well as other helpful resources um, that you may find useful in your career or in your learning path. Thank you and I wish you good luck in your career. Remember, knowledge is power.